2 tablespoons of instant coffee. Am I the only one thinking this? I usually measure my coffee in teaspoons. Tablespoons? What are you trying to give me? Another panic attack? The third one today? I don't really need this in my life, but... And this is gonna be two tablespoons of white sugar. I usually would have gone for sweetener, but I'm feeling nostalgic. I want a little bit of that 2020 nostalgia. So this is essentially the base for our Dalgona coffee. This tastes like the lockdown, a dark time in the world, people dying, and meanwhile, we were just fluffing up some coffee. <laughs> that is so dystopian, I'm sorry, I can't... This is not funny. No, because I really think about all the people dying and we're just doing DIY coffees. What was that? I'm so embarrassed. This is three tablespoons of water and this is the foundation of our Dalgona coffee. So we're gonna whip this up. Wait, there's an important step here. We gotta use the pirate, <laughs> not the pirate electric mixer. Cause it's only got one leg. You understood this. Hopefully this fits, it does. And we're gonna whip this up. Why does my electric mixer sound like a screaming goat? I said 2020, not 2016. Wrong year. This is not as fluffy as I would have liked it to be. And also there's some coffee still in the bottom. So this electric mixer, one hook kind of situation, not great. I'm not subscribed to this. We got some milk here. We're gonna add some ice. Why is this ice a literal weapon? It really feels like 2020 with the amount of mess I'm making here. Time traveling is real. So we're gonna pour this on top and that is essentially what I would like to call the biggest, the original, the OG of TikTok food trends. So we're gonna pour this on top. There we go. Okay, that is, that never gets old, you know? Look at that. That just doesn't get old. It is creamy, it is satisfying, it is so much coffee that explains my mental state four years later. This is the original 2020 TikTok trend. I don't like the way this works. Like when you drink it, this is too much coffee. It's just coffee and sugar, which is delicious. <laughs> it is good. Like I want to get the milk. I don't want to die of a heart attack. I feel like you need a straw. I don't have one. Close second. I'm like, mix, mix with the milk. Lactose intolerant people talking to their intestines. <laughs> I feel like this is one of those things, if you're one of those Dalgona coffee people, you do this every day, you never stopped. If you're not like me, you just make normal coffee. You just add coffee to milk and call it a day. It is a satisfying, fun little hack that kept us busy at a time where we needed to be busy. So here we've got one and a half cups of already roasted hazelnuts, which is something you can buy at the supermarket. So I'm gonna add this to my food processor. I just wanna say, my food processor, it's not the fanciest one. I don't know if this is gonna be able to make Nutella, but we'll try. Oh. Okay, it's not quite a paste yet, but I think we're getting there. I really need to invest in a good food processor, but they're very, very expensive, so this kind of works. I think this is perfect. It does not get more blended than this. It literally is a liquid hazelnut, a paste, as you can see. So this is the perfect consistency we're looking for. To this, I'm gonna add one cup of icing sugar. So one cup icing sugar, one tablespoon at a time. I'm gonna blend the icing sugar just a little bit so I have more space for the rest of the ingredients. So very quickly. And by the way, if it shocks you the amount of sugar that we put in Nutella, welcome to Earth. It's nice having you here. I'm assuming this is your first day. <laughs> this is five tablespoons of cocoa powder and I'm using fancy quality cocoa powder because I want my Nutella to taste gourmet. Instead of a pinch of salt, I'm using a full teaspoon of salt. That might seem excessive, but I think this makes it taste like fancy, expensive, you know? When the chocolate flavor is salty, it adds something to it. Two tablespoons of vegetable oil, just to make sure that everything comes together. But first, we're gonna combine this. This is kind of coming together, but it's a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna add the vegetable oil. Hopefully, the two tablespoons will be enough, but if I need more, I'm just gonna show you. So two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I think this will do it. This will do the trick. No, that is doing the trick. Look at this, look how it's coming together. I mean, 
it looks and smells like Nutella, but fancy, you know? Wait, I need to show it to you. I need to get this out of here so you can see it. We're not fully done yet, but you see how it's already got that Nutella color. Maybe it's slightly lighter than Nutella. Okay. This looks so good. <laughs> I cannot believe we made Nutella in literally three minutes. Oh my God. It looks delicious. Look at that. It actually looks like Nutella, color, texture, the whole thing. If anything, it's a little bit grainier than Nutella. Now here I've got two ounces of milk chocolate. We need to cut this really thin, as thin as I possibly can. Pretend like you're about to feed your newborn who doesn't have teeth yet. Like, and you don't want them to choke to death. That's kind of the challenge here. I really have a way with describing things. So this will be two ounces of milk chocolate. I'm also gonna do a version of this with white chocolate Nutella. You will see that on YouTube Shorts and TikTok. I'm gonna post it here, but just as a YouTube Short, it will be coming soon. So I'm going to add the two ounces of milk chocolate. And that is basically it. So now we're gonna blend everything one last time, and that is our Nutella. So we're gonna get it out, put it in a little container. I'm so excited. Okay, one last blend. <laughs> And at last, here we've got our Nutella. This is the consistency of our homemade Nutella. Look at the way it drips. Let me give you a real look at it. I mean, we made this in like five minutes. It's honestly really impressive because it looks like a Nutella. I'm going to transfer this into a little container because I'm going to put it in the fridge to make it last longer. So this is it. Homemade Nutella in like four ingredients, five minutes. It's Pretty incredible. Maybe a little bit more, but you get the idea. And now I really want to taste it, but first I want to make it look pretty. Maybe it's a little bit easier for you to see the texture here. Like that is the most incredible Nutella texture. I mean, I'm really selling this recipe because I really enjoyed making it. Like if you just give it a little jiggle, you just go like that. <laughs> a generous dollop and I mean, I'm happy with this. It's a spreading consistency. It's not too liquid, not too thick. This is also such a 2020 recipe, you know? If this was in current times, people would be like, just go buy a Nutella from the supermarket. But in 2020, this kind of makes sense because I probably didn't have Nutella at home. Was I too generous with Nutella? Maybe. This looks like a Ferrero advert. We made this. Look at the shine on that. Look at the way it holds, the way it coats the bread, and how much we've got as well. If this tastes delicious, this is 100% approved. Oh, it's not grainy. There's like a bite to it with the hazelnut. That makes it so delicious, almost like a praline Nutella spread. <sighs> This is so good. It is so salty. So only do a full teaspoon of salt if you really want to bring like that gourmet flavor into this. To me, this tastes amazing like this, but if you prefer sweet, just do less salt. 10 out of 10, I cannot stop eating this. This is crack. This is hazelnut crack. I'm gonna start by rolling out my focaccia dough, which in reality, this is just bread dough. Good old purpose bread dough, and you'll be fine. I wasn't gonna make focaccia for this, guys, please. It's 2020, ain't nobody got time for this. Currently, it's 2020, so I'm gonna just use a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. For my focaccia dough, I'm going to stretch out the dough a little bit. Is it going to be enough for this whole thing? I don't know, maybe not. Maybe we'll do just in the center or something. Focaccia has tiny little holes in it, which are kind of natural. This one is just a little too solid. So I'm going to roll this out. This actually feels stretchy like focaccia dough, strangely, even though it isn't. It's kind of giving focaccia, right? Yeah, a little bit. This one is all about the decorating, so hopefully this will be fine. The thing about focaccia is the more you move it, the more it comes back together. I'm like, Please stop, stop this madness. Okay, done. I'm gonna do a little bit of olive oil just in the tiny little holes. And by a little, I mean, we're gonna pretend like this is Italy. And there, olive oil, it's like tap water. I'm okay with this. This looks very, very wet. Perfect. Okay, now onto the decorations for our focaccia. This is the most important thing. Not me making sure I didn't lose any rings in my gloves. The goal here is to build trees. That is kind of what we want here. This is very cottage core TikTok coded, you know? There's a strange side of TikTok where people pretend like they live in another century and then you go to find out those people are actually multi-billionaires. It feels very dystopian, you know? But yeah, this feels like that. This is where we're at. It's gonna be the base of my focaccia tree. Why is there a hole in my focaccia? I didn't want that. It's too late now. There's a hole in it. 
Why is he shrinking? Wait a sec. I'm gonna cut some onion, some red onion. I just want a quarter of it, just a tiny little bit, because I'm gonna need some in 2021, in a year from now which will be 10 minutes from now. I'm gonna slice the red onion and then make flowers out of this. It is cute, I'm not gonna lie. Not me becoming a cottagecore content creator. I would never do that to you. <laughs> Don't have to worry. You'll see my YouTube account delete at first. It's giving painting. It's giving C in art class, really. <laughs> We're gonna get some parsley. Put someone here on this one. Did anyone even ask if these things taste good in a focaccia? I, I honestly don't know. And at this point, I don't wanna know. We have some capers, let's do some capers. Capers are, I don't know what they are. They taste salty, they kinda taste like nature's boogers, but in a delicious way. And last but not least, I'm gonna do some tomatoes. This doesn't take a whole lot of ingredients, so. Ooh, these tomatoes are too big for this. Let's do just one in the center here. Okay, I think I am done. It's not much, it's what we've done. My focaccia keeps on shrinking as you can see this looks better on camera than it does in real life oh my god it's even smaller now than before i can't move this anymore you know what this is what is going to be the world's thickest focaccia i'm going to bake this and then i'm going to show it to you after because i feel like i'm messing it up too much this is our last recipe for 2020 so let's see what it looks like and here we've got our romanticized 2020 focaccia. It actually looks better than I was expecting. It, it really does retain the shape of the drawings that we made. So I'm pretty happy with this. So we're gonna get it out, which was also surprisingly easy. I find these really beautiful. I don't think it was a lot of work. You saw this, I made these very quickly with a few ingredients and it's just effective visually. You know, if you're gonna make focaccia, if you're gonna make bread, why not? Why not romanticize it? Life is short, so we're gonna cut into the focaccia. Listen to this. Even when you slice it, it still keeps the drawing. It doesn't have as many holes as I would have liked. Let's give it a try. That is delicious. That is like pizza. I need a good focaccia recipe that doesn't take a million years. That's what I need. Next up, we're time traveling into 2021. 2021 is my favorite of this whole video. So stay tuned for that. So my cherry tomatoes are not very cherry tomatoes. They're more like clown nose tomatoes. <laughs> They're a little bit big, but it will work out nevertheless. I mean, for 2021, this was the recipe that had the whole, I was gonna say the nation, but I'm gonna go as far as saying the world on chokehold. This was the one, the cherry tomato feta bake, and I've never tried it. So this is here an exclusive. This is the only dish I've got left, so it's deep and not ideal for this, but it's going to work out just fine. It might even be better to mix in the pasta. Then we need the garlic. I'm using four because I'm not making that much. This is plenty, trust me. I make sure mine are peeled because I think my neighbor is choking on something. Should I go help? I'm gonna do the salt and pepper on the cherry tomatoes and the garlic. Half of the olive oil, just to make sure everything gets seasoned in here, you know? And the most important thing is the feta cheese. I actually love feta cheese. I will eat feta cheese in any kind of way. I'm trying not to break this. I'm sorry I broke the feta cheese. The only one time where this was important. Oh man, I really had one job here. But you know what? It's going to be fine. This will be more rustic. This is more like what they have in Greece, you know? So we got the feta cheese, we got the tomatoes on this side. We can kind of move things around. We can move the tomatoes on this side if this bothers you. But all that matters is that it will taste the same and it will be delicious. This actually looks really good. Broken, but it will still be delicious, I'm assuming. I'm gonna do the rest of the olive oil. I gotta make sure to add flavor where I can. And then, yes, this is like maybe two teaspoons of oregano. I'm not actually using measurements for this recipe because let's be honest, neither will you. Let's keep it real. That is it. That is everything that you need. Mine is a heavily spiced version. This is gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes at a medium high temperature. And I have some leftover pasta from yesterday because I'm always thinking ahead of these videos and we're gonna mix it in. Is this worth the hype of 2021? Oh, this is sizzling. Listen to this. Look at this. That looks beautiful. That looks pretty damn delicious. It's toasty, it's garlicky, it's burnt, but also very soft because it's falling apart. I'm gonna grab a fork and I'm gonna squish this together. All the olive oil, 
the roasted garlic, the tomatoes, and it's so soft everything. This pasta looks terrible. This is truly leftover pasta, but I'm trying not to make as much food waste with videos. I'm gonna add some spinach to the pasta. This is about one cup of spinach, which seems excessive, You'll see what happens. And to this, it is gonna be the most satisfying part. Truly making food like it's 2021. Look at this. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Give me all the olive oil, every ounce of this toasty, garlicky flavor. We're gonna coat every ounce of pasta that it won't even matter. You wanna mix this while it's still really warm because it will kind of soften up the spinach. It will bring the pasta back to life, even if it's leftover pasta like mine. I mean, this took 30 minutes total. Tell me this doesn't look exactly like you'd see at a fancy salad bar in New York City. This looks like it's gonna be called, can I get the Jennifer Aniston? You know what I mean? I'm going to top it up with just a little more oregano, just for a little extra flavor. So I wonder what it's gonna give. No, 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 no. This is delicious. It is tangy from the feta cheese. It is cozy because of the roast garlic. It is fresh because of the tomato. It is textural because of the spinach and the pasta being soft and there's a bite to it at the same time. I get why this went viral in 2021 and this would go viral again in 2024. This is incredible. A 10 out of 10 dish made in one pot. Like this is all the dish washing you need to do. Now imagine this with white rice. You will also see that coming up on my short content. So this is incredible, I'm more than approved. I found the largest slice of bread for this. This is so big that it will fit two eggs in it, I think. Nothing screams 2021 more than pesto eggs. If you were there in 2021, which I'm assuming you were, unless you're three years old. I'm gonna toast up the bread just a little bit. I actually want the bread to stay soft. I don't like my bread overly crunchy. I'm like, the roof of my mouth has been through enough. And by enough, I mean Pringles and Flaming Hot Cheetos. Meanwhile, I'm gonna prepare my avocado and by preparing it, I'm gonna cut half of it. Have you ever seen someone who doesn't know how to cook cutting open an avocado? It was me at some point as well. I guess I'm gonna cut into like, squares. And meanwhile, my bread is ready. I'm starting with some ricotta. Ideally, I would have used cream cheese for this, but I had some ricotta at home and I'm like, let's use it. A little layer of ricotta cheese and I'm gonna spread this out. Now that we've got a nice layer of whatever cheese you're using, I'm gonna add the avocado. This is my favorite part. Ideally going to mash this, but I don't have a fork here. Can I mash it with a knife? Yeah, I can. Mostly because I'm lazy, but this is fine. <laughs> it looks pretty good, so I'm gonna slide this out. So I'm using Genovese pesto. What does that mean? I don't know. Let's pretend like this makes sense to us. So I'm gonna start with the pesto. It's gonna sizzle. Immediately smells delicious. I wanna close this up, because I don't want the egg to run away. There's enough things run away from my life as it is. Looking at you, watching this video. There we go, two eggs. The temperature could be a little bit higher, sure, but I was scared. I'm only gonna season this with garlic and black pepper. I know they use chili in the video, but I don't have any. And this is gonna be delicious. This is an extra step that I always do, which is I like to put a lid over it, which I know sounds insane and it looks insane, but this will make sure the egg steams and it doesn't overcook. So you can actually put the temperature down and the pesto will not burn. I'm like a specialist in pesto eggs. I ate it every single day in 2021. It is ready. It's actually a little bit past cooked. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna cut them in half. This method that I use with the lid, this never fails. So we're gonna scoop up the egg and put it on top of the bread. And we're gonna scoop up the other egg. So this is enough for maybe two slices of bread or one giant slice, which is in my case. And how amazing does this look? Yes, it is perfect. It is literally cooked to perfection. Don't sleep on my lid method. Look at this. And the best part is the white is actually cooked. The amount of times I've been to restaurants and they give me runny eggs, except the white is runny. Nobody wants that. Literally not a single person wants that. We just want the yellow runny. That is delicious. Look at this. Look how delicious this looks. Usually I go for Philadelphia for the cheese. It tastes just as good, so... Why does it taste nostalgic, you know? It tastes like two years ago, three years ago, and it's very delicious. So here I've got my leftover salmon. It's not always that I have leftover. Like, this just doesn't happen to me. I don't know why. When I make food, I eat it. It's, it's really simple. We're gonna follow this according to the video. So I'm going to basically shred. Would you call this shredding? 
guess this is leftover, it's actually really easy. I know everybody and their mom, literally, even moms did this. Follow this recipe. This was a really popular lunch in 2021. Just one bite for good luck. I would eat this as it is. So I think this goes in the bottom. I should be making this in a bowl, but I want you to see it. And then this is my leftover rice. It's cold, so I'm gonna put it on top. I think kind of this amount, right? We're supposed to put an ice cube right in the center. And my ice cubes are huge. It's a little bit too big, we'll be fine. I don't know what this is supposed to do. Girl dinner on a diet. <laughs> and then some parchment paper on top. I'm gonna squish this. Not me being four years late to the lunch that everyone eats. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this in the microwave, I'm guessing for two to three minutes, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Does the ice cube make any difference? Let's find out. So here we've got our microwave rice and there's still some of the ice cube left, which I think they did in the video as well. We're gonna remove the ice cube left and I think we're gonna mix everything up. I mean, this seemed like it microwaved really well. Like the rice doesn't feel like leftover rice. It looks fresh. Maybe it's the technique. Oh, and the salmon is like crisp in the bottom. First of all, we're doing some soy sauce. Yes, I'm gonna go heavy on the soy sauce. It's just who I am, mom. A drizzle of sriracha. I wanna go too crazy. I'm not feeling too spicy today. This is my favorite mayo in the whole world. Like, honestly, creamy. And I'm not the biggest fan of mayo. Okay, but would you look at this? Okay, that actually looks pretty good. I mean, let me ask the audience. <laughs> I will never not quote one of the most iconic things ever said in the world, in the history of sentences ever said. Then we got a little side of kimchi over here. And the only thing left is the avocado, which is an essential part of this. So we're gonna dice up the avocado. Ooh, not me almost slicing my finger. These Japanese knives, I'm telling you, don't play around these Japanese knives. I actually am more of a fan of a diced up avocado rather than a sliced. And we're gonna squeeze the avocado right here. Perhaps the most important part is we've got some Korean uh, seaweed chips. We're gonna grab one of these and we're gonna put it on the rice and just eat it just like this. This is a fun way to eat rice, actually. No, never mind. That's pretty easy. That is so good. Oh, something was done here. This is so delicious. I'm gonna be eating this. This is gonna be my next hyper fixation. The textures are literally perfect. It tastes like breakfasty because of the avocado, but also creamy and spicy. I'm gonna need someone to go to Korea really quick. This is insane. This is my favorite thing in the whole video. 2021. This has been my favorite one so far. I'm gonna pick a winner by the end of the video. For me, it's 2021 so far. 2021. And next up, we're going to 2022. What's gonna happen? Let's find out. So I'm gonna start by dicing up some cucumber. This is about how much I'm using. This is supposed to be chopped up in perfect squares, so... Me and using a knife, I don't know. I'm a little better than I used to be, so we'll see. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. First, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna do the same on this side. 2022 was the year of salads. Something crazy happened on TikTok this year where every single person was eating salads. I think it's got something to do was that the revenge of the spinach? I was about to shade salads and the spinach literally tried to kill me. Why is it always, you gotta eat your greens? What if the greens are trying to eat you? I don't know, something about 2022 where people just wanted to be healthy. I think it was because the world was about to opening up again and people just wanted to look their best, live a healthy lifestyle. And by the way, I slayed the dicing up of this. The growth that I've presented on my YouTube channel. So this is supposed to be scoopable with a tortilla chip. That's why it needs to be quite small. And this goes into the bowl. So we're supposed to do this with three different vegetables. Next up, I'm gonna dice up some cabbage. I love cabbage when it's cooked. We'll see. This is more difficult slice up because it does not want to stay in place you know you see this one kind of looks like this it is very satisfying I think one of the reasons why this salad became so popular it is very satisfying to prepare the last chopped ingredient I'm using chives I tried to understand what they use in the video and I'm not sure I think it might have been spring onions but I'm gonna use chives when I film these videos I don't think a lot of you guys don't understand how many ingredients and lists you need there's always something that's missing you know 
no matter how much I plan this, there's always something that's missing. I'm not complaining. You'll never hear me complain about my job. I love my job. This is the best job in the world. This looks so satisfying and choppy. It looks like Minecraft salad. That is it. That is the base for our salad. So I'm going to clean up my bench and we're going to move on to what I believe is the reason why this is so popular, the green goddess salad. So the green goddess sauce is just a bunch of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. This is an expensive salad. We're going to need the juice of two lemons. Mine are tiny little lemons. So this will be a very... Didn't think about that. The juice of two lemons. To this, we're gonna add two shallots, two cloves of garlic, a quarter of a cup of olive oil, cashews. Uh, what is this? Chives. It looks like you're about to make a science project. Some walnuts and some spinach, which I don't think we need all this spinach. So that seems like I'm gonna need a little splash of water to get this going, because if you look at this, that is why this is called the green goddess salad. Can we do this? Somehow this worked. Okay, needs a little bit more processing, but the texture feels very similar. Man, I can't believe this actually came together. The consistency is pretty spot on. It's also very oniony because of the shallots. So. What they didn't tell you was that this sauce will make you cry. I don't know why I am tearing up. It's just the memories of 2022. I also realized we didn't add salt and pepper at any stage. So I'm just gonna salt and pepper this. But I think just a little bit, you know? I'm actually gonna eat this stuff during the week. So I want it to taste good. I'm gonna pour the sauce onto the salad. And now this is it. It's a very wet, almost like a guacamole. We almost made guacamole, you know, the texture of it anyways. It smells very fresh, like the freshest smell you can imagine. That's it, that's the salad. I think we were pretty successful at recreating it. It looks very similar. Down to the size of the vegetables, the color of the sauce, I think it looks pretty damn similar. Oh, these are very fragile corn chips. This is a recipe for disaster. Let's give it a try. Oh, that is so peppery. Where's that peppery come from? Oh my God. No, cause I fully understand the name of this salad. It tastes like a hug from mother nature. It is really delicious, really fresh, really crisp and very peppery. Is it too peppery? A little bit to me. That is the only thing I would tone down a little bit. Where does the pepperiness come from? No clue. This was the snack of 2022. This was the one, the pickled garlic. This is what everyone was eating. I've never tried it. So here I've got some pickled garlic. This is not just regular garlic and water. I actually pickled this myself. I used the vinegar from pickles and I've left it soak for four days now. I'm not sure, delicious, but I'm not sure about this. If I watch the video correctly, we're supposed to drain this. So I'm gonna save the pickled water in case I wanna re-pickle my garlic, no wasting this. This has been a lot of hard work. To this, we're gonna add some thyme. There's probably measurements for this, but I feel like with these things, does it really matter? This is chili powder, I think. I'm going heavy on the spices. And last but not least, this is some sriracha. Okay. I'm not sure about eating raw garlic. This seems really intense. This looks spicy. Look at this. That looks really spicy. Let's see if 2022 changes my mind. Why do I feel like I'm making my own kimchi and I'm gonna get food poisoning from it? I'm just gonna say, I'm going into this with an open mind. I don't know. I'm not crazy about garlic and especially raw. That smells so delicious. It looks so good as well. Doesn't that look delicious? It kind of looks like beans. Why does it look like beans? Why is this making me crave Mexican food? Let's get one of the garlics. This is what the garlic looks like. I mean, this is a huge piece of garlic. I don't know. I'm scared. I like garlic when it's cooked. That is still kind of raw. That's a lot. The flavor, it's nutty and it's sweet at first, but then this and the sharpness in the center of the garlic. First mistake, pickling my own garlic. Second mistake, making this and putting it inside my mouth. I am gonna be paying for this so bad. That is so spicy, pickly. I'm not sure about this. I feel like I have to rethink the situation. It comes down to my garlic was not ready for this yet. My garlic needed maybe another four days of pickling. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-pickle this 
with all the ingredients and then try this again. That makes perfect sense. You thought I was gonna do something silly and usual, but we have growth on this YouTube channel. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Growth. Why do I feel like I'm still gonna fail? That would be so embarrassing after what I said. Close enough. Pretty happy with that. You know I'm taking this very seriously when we bring the big guns. These are the big guns. I'm gonna start with the red onion because this will be satisfying. <laughs> I thought this would be easier. Sorry, neighbors. Ooh, sorry, neighbors, part two. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna be killed tonight. At least he does a good job. Got a variety of peppers. This is supposed to be yellow peppers, red peppers, and orange peppers. All of them bell peppers. I don't know, I'm colorblind. Is this? This is what it's supposed to be. <laughs> this machine is not as powerful as I thought. You know what? Sometimes my neighbors do the dirty at 3 a.m. and I can also hear it. So, I'm doing four tomatoes. I guess mine are quite small. Oh my God, is this gonna squish everywhere? Nope. That was actually pretty great. If you don't have one of these machines, this would be a lot more time consuming. But in reality, this is very satisfying. This is basically a good base for salsa. That just makes me want to eat some Mexican food. I want to go to a Mexican restaurant. The only thing I didn't chop up is the cilantro. This is supposed to be half a cup, which is a lot. I don't know what cowboys are eating. I just want to say the name of this, Cowboys Caviar, is the greatest dish name of all time. This is why this went viral. That is basically everything. So this is basically the base for the cowboy's caviar and we're just gonna mix everything together now so if you've got one of these very easy need a big bowl for this so we're gonna start with the mixture that we just made that is so satisfying when stuff is diced up it just makes me so happy to this i'm gonna add one avocado so i pre-diced this up and i'm just gonna add the center of it the other half of the avocado also goes in it's a lot easier like this sweet corn this is supposed to be one can i think and these are black beans which have a hair on it which is mine so it's fine <laughs> black beans and these are what do you call this black eyed black eyed peas wait is that ben another hair fergie <laughs> i need to stop being funny because i need to focus on work these beans you know which ones i mean then i'm gonna do half a cup of olive oil and this is a quarter cup of vinegar, apple cider vinegar specifically. And last but not least, this is salt, curry powder, and black pepper. And there we go, cowboy's caviar. We're gonna mix everything. And honestly, it looks good. It's a very delicious salad. None of the, you know, those greens that are hard to eat, like lettuce or spinach, none of that. Just the good stuff, you know? It's a very rich salad. Because of the tomato juices, it kind of becomes a little slimy in a good positive way. Get a little bit of everything. Oh my God, it is so delicious. It's so creamy from the avocado and the beans. It's like this creamy, cozy texture. Oh man, that is so good. It is fresh. I kind of get the caviar because it's a very rich, expensive tasting. Nothing to see, just rescuing back my avocado. This is delicious, it is so, so good. The longer it sits here, the more it becomes kind of like, a, I don't want to say paste, but the more it becomes like it holds together, it becomes one unit. This is a pretty incredible dip, salad, whatever you want to call it, it is really delicious. 2023 was a rough year and this is the proof of that. <laughs> I've got a giant piece of bread. I'm gonna put a butter candle in the center because this makes sense. Somehow this is better than the butter board. So I've got some butter here and I'm just going to slice it so that it melts quicker. And I'm just gonna put in this paper cup. I think you can microwave a paper cup, correct? I don't know, hopefully. This goes in here. Seems like it might overflow with the butter, but keep in mind this will probably melt and I'm probably gonna have to do more. I'm already shaping this. I'm gonna do a little bit more. This is not even enough. Not my first rodeo with melting butter. Just a cup with butter in it. <laughs> At least this is simple. So I'm gonna microwave this for one minute. I don't know if you can see, but there's still a gap. So I kinda wanna go all the way to the top with butter. So I'm gonna add a little bit more and it's just gonna melt. Okay, now we're reaching the top, do you see? because I want my candle wick to actually hold here. Then we're adding some spices to it. This is a mixture of thyme, rosemary, just Italian kind of seasoning. And we're gonna mix this in. 
with the rest of the butter. Don't worry, this will melt, I promise you. Then I've got a candle wick. This is a wick from a candle that I removed myself. I went and removed. Is this probably contaminated and toxic? Maybe, you know what? I don't really care. Don't tell me things I never asked in the first place, but that is the perfect size. So using some of this tape, this will work somehow. It is in place and it is in the center exactly. I'm really happy with this. It's actually, wait, am I a candle maker out of a sudden? Look at this. You see how the wick is perfectly in the center? It's kind of satisfying. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer or fridge. Using the exact same cup, we're gonna try and carve a cup hole, a cup boost. <laughs> Let's find the bread OC. <laughs> I'm so lucky that this is fresh bread. Imagine if this was stale bread. 2023 is the most chaotic year because a lot of things have been overly done on TikTok. So people are kind of like running out of creativity, especially in the food world. Let's see if we can remove this perfectly. I mean, we can. So I'm gonna squish it a little bit in the bottom to make this more even. And what do you do with the rest? Mm, well, that's delicious bread. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna use my good knife to cut this into slices without ruining the integrity of the bread too much. I think this is perfect now. Look at this. So this is kind of how I sliced it. And here we've got our candle. It's butter with herbs and it's got a candle wick in the center. So I'm gonna just remove the duct tape. Okay, the candle wick is stuck in a good way. I'm thinking of doing this. Are you kidding me? Oh, the bottom is not set yet. Oh, what happened there? Um, nothing to see. What matters is the top is literally perfect. And then this, nobody will see this. We're gonna put the candle inside the bread. This is the moment. <laughs> Guys, a romantic dinner for the young Renaissance gentleman. Like, it's a candle. <laughs> This is the happiest day of my life. I'm really fighting the urges to switch off the lights and walk around my house pretending like I'm a Victorian ghost. Oh my God, it has actually worked. This is supposed to start melting, but it's making a really strange sound. It sounds like it's going to explode. Should we give it five minutes and see if this starts melting? Cause I don't know if you can see, but it's dripping a little bit on the sides. You can kind of see the shininess. Look at this. That's melted herb butter. Why did I feel the presence of a medieval ghost out of a sudden? Let's grab a little bit of bread and I'm just gonna dip it in the butter with the herbs and everything. Oh, accidentally put out the butter. That is delicious. Can I taste pine? Maybe. Would I do this again? <laughs> I guess so. I enjoyed it. It's a fun process. It was fairly easy. It's not that expensive. Butter is expensive, but bread isn't. So why not? Give it a try. Live a little. So, approved. So I've got an apple here and I'm gonna try to slice this into pretty slices. Is this possible? Maybe. Thin slices, preferably. 2023, there was definitely the trend of inverted anything. Inverted pies, inverted mini pastries, pop tarts. It was this whole thing. It feels very fitting to be trying this one. This is a slice of apple and I was trying to do that effect. You know exactly what I mean. And I think we kind of got it. Why does that look like potato? I'm not gonna move it. I don't wanna ruin it. And I'm gonna do the same for this one. This one could be a little better, but it's okay. How many am I gonna make? Maybe three, I just decided. So we've got our apples. The only thing we'll need is our puff pastry. I think this could be really delicious if you use a different type of pastry, maybe like a pie crust. That could be really delicious as well. But I'm gonna just stick to the traditional TikTok trend, which is puff pastry. So I'm gonna cut a square of puff pastry. I think that'll be pretty perfect. Each will be around this size. Why am I being so precise? When did I go to culinary school? I don't know. Imagine if I secretly have been taking cooking lessons. No, that would be funny. I should have done that. First of all, I'm gonna add some honey. We're gonna do one on here. Oh, that's a lot of honey. This is going to caramelize, it's fine. Another one on here. I'm doing maybe about a teaspoon of honey, which seems a little bit excessive, I'm not gonna lie. Now, using the apples, I am trying to strategically place them on top. This is not easy, but I'll try my best. 
I need to strategically place them on top of the honey. The thing with making inverted stuff is it's very, very forgiving because it'll flatten down. Okay, we're gonna do a little more drizzle of honey on top. This time just an actual drizzle. I think this is mostly so that it sticks to the puff pastry. That is everything that we needed with honey. Now we're going to place a sheet of puff pastry on top of the apples. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So we just grab the puff pastry and just go. That's it. It's as simple as that. Just make sure it covers the whole thing so it doesn't leak. And that is it. It's basically like a Pop-Tart before adults, you know? And last but not least, this is just some egg wash, which is just one egg beaten. And I am going to brush it on top just so that we get a nice golden crust on it. 2023 is funny to me. There's a lot of humor in 2023. This stuff is just silly. We're just trying to be creative, trying to do something silly and goofy to make life bearable, you know? 12 minutes in the oven, and these better look nice and squashed on the other side, otherwise I'm gonna be so disappointed. Now, why, why do they look like raviolis? I don't know. So here we've got our inverted apple pastries, and they feel good, they feel crunchy on top. I just think I put too much honey, as you can see, so I'm worried they're not gonna come off. But maybe? Oh, it is beautiful. You need to see this in 4K. Oh my god, we made this. This looks like something that would be in like a French patisserie. Even the ugly one turned out pretty cute. This is probably my favorite one with the burnt edges. And it's just, they feel so... They feel so light. I'm gonna put them on a fancy plate because they are so beautiful. that I feel like it's the only way to do this. We could sprinkle some icing sugar, but I actually think it looks beautiful like this. This TikTok trend is 100% approved. This was four ingredients and very, very quick. That is so good. A little bit of cinnamon would have taken this to the next level. Just me being honest. The stickiness from the honey. There's a the hair. Definitely give this a try. 2023 is a weird creative year, but the stuff does give. So it's got that in common with the other ones. It's just, we take strange routes to get where we're meant to go. Isn't that? how 2023 went for all of us collectively. For as much as it pains me, 2023 was also the year of the cottage cheese. This was the year in which people ate cottage cheese on its own. They made everything out of cottage cheese, including cookie dough. I'm just gonna do it. So cottage cheese, an incredible texture. I actually like cottage cheese if it's mixed into things that are warm, because it kind of melts and it removes this chunks because i like the flavor of it i like it with mexican food for example i think it's kind of delicious controversial opinion this year tiktok found out that if you blend cottage cheese you can transform it into having an actual pleasant texture kind of like cream cheese we're gonna test that out so to this we're gonna add some maple syrup i didn't measure this so i'm gonna stop right here i always link the tiktok's description down below so you can always go and find the recipe. And this is some vanilla extract. I also measured too much. I don't know what I was thinking. This is it, cottage cheese, maple syrup, and vanilla extract. The cottage cheese immediately goes smooth. Look at this. Because of the vanilla and the maple syrup, it also smells like cookie dough instantly. And I'm not just saying this. I wouldn't be a hater, but I'm not a liar. Look at this it actually goes smooth. So maybe cottage cheese just needed a little boost, just a little help, a little push. So this mixture is going to be the liquid base to our cookie dough. To this, we're gonna add some protein powder, cookie dough flavored protein powder. This is supposed to be almond flour, but I'm actually using oat flour because this is all I had in my pantry. So I'm gonna use less because it absorbs a lot of moisture. I would let you know how much I use roughly. This is probably what, a quarter of a cup? Around that much. I'll let you know if I need more. So I just want this to kind of go cookie dough consistency. I love how we made this smooth to then make it lumpy again. Very interesting. It's kind of going cookie dough actually. I have to mix this well. We're not there yet. I would say another quarter cup of oat flour is necessary. This is kind of where we're at. Cookie dough consistency because look, it doesn't really drop. It takes a while, but then it does. 
but it also you can spoon it. Can you eat it with a spoon? Yes, that is the perfect cookie dough. To this, I'm gonna add the chocolate chips. I should have probably done more chocolate chips, but this is all I had left. I didn't want to open a new chocolate bar for this. So this is what we get. It's kind of giving, I forgot that this is cream cheese. So will it taste good? We're gonna find out. Does it look like cookie dough? Kind of weirdly. Let's give it a try. You know what? I don't know if it's the oat flour. Something here tastes like baby food. It tastes like baby food meets cookie dough. It is very delicious. I love the texture of this. I completely forgot that there's cheese in it, especially cottage cheese. You would never know. Yeah, I could eat the whole bowl. That's when you know. Even without the chocolate chips, I would eat the whole bowl. That's when you know, you know? Approved, but I'm never gonna make this again because I just don't buy this kind of cheese. It's strangely beautiful. And the longer it sits here, the more like cookie dough it looks like it like, looks like literally raw cookie dough. It's got that stiffness to it. We went from 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. I would love to do 2024. There are some trends already and I will do it if you really want me to, but it's a little bit early. But if you want me to do it, give the video a like, subscribe and switch the notifications on so you don't miss out on future episodes and so you don't miss out on delicious cottage cheese cookie dough recipes, you know? There's just always something delicious going on here. If you like this, I really do appreciate those of you who support this, who subscribe, who've got the notifications on, and who comment on the video, that is the best way to let me know that you enjoy this content. I love you guys, and I will see you on my next video, which should be in a few days. Bye-bye.